In this series of videos, we're going to talk a little bit about what we call informal fallacies. And what we're really talking about is how to, how to recognize, how to avoid making mistakes or even deliberately misleading people when we make an argument. Now let's say a quick word about the word argument itself. The word argument actually comes from Latin, which then comes from Greek. There's the Greek word, uh, argos, comes into English letters like that, argos, which means clear or bright or brilliant. And from that comes the Latin word argumentum, argumentum, which is the Latin word for a proof of something. So when we make an argument, what we mean is that we are trying to make our statement clear and persuasive, right? We're not talking about a verbal fight, not that kind of an argument. Like I got into an argument uh, over where to go eat tonight. Not talking about that kind of thing. So we're talking about when you want to persuade somebody of something and you want to put out clear reasons for that. Now, in my other set of videos, uh, we talked about formal logic and some of the fallacies that go with that. And formal logic, you may recall, or you can see those videos, uh, talks about the form or the structure in which we present our argument, how we say things. So literally the order of the words adds to the strength of the argument, what we call the validity of the argument. And if what we're saying is true, then we put that together with a valid argument. We say that our argument is sound. But now we're talking about informal arguments and informal logic. And informal, honestly, is how you and I mostly talk with friends and family uh, when we're, we're trying to, um, you know, maybe persuade them of something. It's also what we see in advertisements very often. It's what we see sometimes in political campaigns as well. And there's a lot of times things that we will say um, or even write in that kind of argument that is what we call fallacious. And again, that's coming from Latin. Uh, the Latin verb follow, follera, uh, means to deceive. And that's where we get the word fallacy, or the adjective form of that, fallacious. And a fallacy is something that really misleads or deceives. Now, it may be intentional, or it may not be, but either way, it really is not a strong argument. And so we're going to look at a long list of these over the course of these videos. And we're going to start off by looking at a group of uh, fallacies that we refer to as fallacies of relevance. What we mean by that is that um, these fallacies honestly bring items into the argument that are just irrelevant. Okay, it's just, just pointless. And we all do it, uh, like I say, sometimes in t uh, unintentionally. But we want to be careful that what we say actually has meaning and actually has bearing on the argument that we're trying to make. So the first set of these uh, fallacies of relevance is what we call the odd fontem fallacies. Odd fontem which in Latin literally means to the source, to the source. And these are fallacies that they go to the source, right? They go right to the root of something and, and weaken it. And you realize mm, that that's, that's not making a good argument. But let me, let me give you an example of, of what we mean. In the ad fontem fallacies, we have uh, two that kind of go by the same name. We have something called ad hominem, and there's the abusive version, and there's the circumstantial version. Okay? Ad hominem, the abusive version and the circumstantial version. Now, ad hominem literally means to or against the person. 
So these are fallacies where somebody is trying to make an argument, trying to reason about something, and that person attacks another person, maybe by name calling uh, or by saying, well, you're associated with, with a particular organization or a thing. And, and so, so, so this, I, I can't believe you, right? What, what, what you're saying is, is wrong. These are what we call ad hominem fallacies. And the best way to, to show you what I'm talking about is with an example. So here we go with an example of ad hominem abusive. We have our logic dragon and his friend, the kangaroo. And logic dragon says, I'm glad Mr. Perkins chose smart creatures for his graphics. Well, kangaroo wonders about that. And she says, well, well, well what do you mean? Logic Dragon goes on and says, well, the students wouldn't learn anything if he had used an ugly animal like a warthog. And Kangaroo says, um, what does appearance have to do with it? So you see what's going on here, right? Ad hominem abusive to the person or against the person abusive is, is name calling. It's where he, this dragon says, wow, you can't trust warthogs, they're ugly. Well, what's that got to do with it? Maybe they are. But that doesn't mean that they're not smart necessarily, right? It doesn't mean that they couldn't have been used as illustrations in a logic video. When we use insulting language, demeaning or abusive language to attack somebody as a reason not to listen to or believe that person, that's the ad hominem. Uh, abusive fallacy. Now let's take another look at ad hominem abusive uh, with a different example. It's just slightly different and it's going to help you understand what we're talking about. So here's the little girl in gold and she says, do you want to start a study group together before the test? And the fellow in blue says, yes, but we shouldn't include Bob. He's a cheater. Now, Bob may be a cheater, he may not be a cheater, but the mere fact that just calling him a cheater is no reason not to include him in the study group. I think we all get what the guy in blue is trying to say. It would have been better if he had said it like this. When she asks, do you want to get a study group together before the test? He could have said something like this, yes, but since Bob has stolen my notes and cheated on the last three exams, let's not invite him. So you see in that argument, what the fellow in blue is doing, he's actually giving some solid evidence, okay? Bob has stolen my notes. Bob has in fact cheated on the last three exams. I'm simply laying out the facts of the matter. And for that reason, we shouldn't invite him into the study group. Simply calling him a cheater, again, that's name calling, all right? That, that, that doesn't accomplish anything, and it really doesn't make the argument strong. Now, as I said earlier, there's another type of the ad hominem fallacy. It's the ad hominem circumstantial. And again, for that one, we're probably best just taking a look at an example. So here's our kangaroo, and she says, what makes me happy is that Mr. Perkins chose still graphics like us for his pictures. Logic Dragon says, well, why do you say that? And Kangaroo says, well, those animated GIFs only care about dancing around and drawing attention to themselves and wouldn't help the students learn anything. Logic Dragon says, oh, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. <laughs>